Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to another lecture technical review on friction loss and pressure loss. They are quite related and actually I always get the question on why specifically the Bernoulli's law or properly mechanical energy equation relates velocity, pressure, friction and height. And this is exactly what we're going to be covering. So one of the main things that I see the problem the most is that a lot of people stick to the Bernoulli's equation without friction loss. And well, we know that in order to have a proper system, this must be true, right? Energy going in, which will be, let it be this point, the energy going here, we've got a volumetric flow rate one, must be equal to the energy going out of the volumetric flow rate two. So technically speaking, we already know that because this is a continuous process, Q1 equals Q2, let it be volumetric flow rate overall. So yeah, the left hand side must be equal to the right hand side. For now, I decided to avoid any kind of calculation on height. I really think that height may change the perception of the equation. Right now, I really want to focus the most on friction loss and pressure drop, okay? Okay, let's get rid of height. This is the equation per se. And we got the simplified Bernoulli equation that relates pressure and velocity. Meaning that, let's make a very quick analysis. If we have a very high pressure in the inlet, this may cause that the velocity goes in a smaller fashion. And the reverse may be true. We may encounter a lower pressure and a high velocity here. Now, in this specific case, we have the same piping uh, diameter. So yeah, diameter one equals the same diameter here, a diameter two. So this is even simplified, okay guys? So let me clean this up, I really think. What we're going to be doing, okay, so if the velocities are the same, and we can ensure that because volumetric flow rate of one equals volumetric flow rate of two, there is no change in diameter. So yeah, essentially the cross-sectional area is the same here and here, so the velocities are the same. So we end up with a very simplified version of the Bernoulli's equation. But actually, in real life, you're going to encounter that this doesn't make that much of a sense. So actually, these are the same values, so I can get rid of those. So in theory, pressure one and pressure two must be equal in all cases. Whenever we're working with a pipeline that has the same cross-sectional area with the same volumetric flow rate in continuous flow. But in reality, we see that if we add a manometer right here and we have a manometer right here as well, we're going to encounter that there is actually a difference. So our theory on pressures being the same is not true. So we got five bar, let it be here. And we got something around 4.5 bars. So yeah, 4.5 exactly, or not exactly the same at five. Many of you could say, well, maybe this is measuring error. Maybe this is because we are adding the manometers inside the pipeline. But in reality, it is that we have an actual pressure drop. And this is the main question. Why are we having a pressure drop if there's nothing in between? And the answer will be, yes, we do have something in between. Actually, it's a trajectory dependent variable. And we're talking about friction or properly friction loss. And all friction losses will always have a relationship with energy loss. And remember that the mechanical energy equation is exactly that, a equation that relates all the energies, pressure, velocities, and height. So how are we going to account for friction loss? Is friction going to decrease velocity? Is it going to decrease height? Is it going to decrease pressure? Well, typically, what we're going to encounter in a lot of processes that work continuously and that height may not be the main concern, we're going to see that friction loss is going to be affecting directly pressure drop. So essentially, that's the quick answer. Pressure drop is caused because there is friction loss along the pathway. I want to talk a little bit more on the actual mechanical energy equation. Uh, I like this one a lot. This is in meters or feet, essentially height. And uh, remember that this is a little trick. What we do is divide the pressure or all the equation, technically speaking, by the specific gravity. Specific gravity being nothing more than the density and gravity. And that's why, if you remember, the potential energy, potential energy equals the mass times gravity times height. In this specific case, we don't have mass, we're talking about fluids, so probably 
density. So it's kind of similar. Hopefully you get the idea because we are dividing by kilograms. Remember that energy divided by kilograms are specific energy. So only we need to relate gravity and height. So that's why whenever we divide by gravity, we end up with height. What I want to present you is this concept right here, which is friction loss. And actually, because we're talking about friction loss, we're going to be adding a negative symbol, meaning that it's removing energy from the relationship. So energy one is no longer equal to energy two. We already know that. We need to account for this friction factor. Or let it be friction loss. Minus HL will be equal to energy two. And as you can see from this specific case, we can see that the energy one is way higher than energy two. Not only that, guys, what I want to show you is that if we are talking about the same height, same diameters, same volumetric flow rate, then we can relate P1 and the pressure drop HL equals pressure zoom and specific gravity. So I really love this specific case in which we are relating not only energy, but pressure head or the pressure difference. Now we could further manipulate. Actually, I love to add delta P. So what I'm going to be doing is, okay, moving this one right here to the right. So we got friction loss equals pressure two minus pressure one divided by specific gravity. And yes, the friction loss, as you can see, will depend on the density of the fluid. But more importantly, we are relating to pressure points, which for me is great because now we understand the delta P. Why is there a specific change in pressure? Well, specifically because of friction loss. This is a very quick way to see pressure drops. So actually we could even say pressure divided by specific gravity equals HL negative. You may also encounter this relationship as the reverse. So the pressure drop, ensuring that this is going to be a negative value, equals a friction loss right here. So generally speaking, guys, you get the idea. We have related the pressure drop for a piping system that has similar diameters, similar height for any fluid. Actually, we can relate any fluid with the specific gravity. And we have related the change in pressure, let it be pressure drop, for a system given that there is friction loss, which in real life will be most of cases. So now guys, we understand how to relate pressure drop with friction loss in piping systems.